This is a 1000 watt projection lamp that's installed in this old 16 millimeter Bell and Howell projector. Today, we're going to open it up and look at the sections responsible for making the sound. The soundtrack for the 16 millimeter was recorded optically, which required a system to detect it. It starts here with this exciter lamp. The lamp would shine through this lens. The lens would then go through the film, which would be wrapped around this wheel. And then there's a mirror, which would project that beam of light into the amplifier section. You could think of this as a form of optical modulation. As the film would pass, it would allow more or less light through to the amplifier. Once again, that modulated light was reflected off a mirror. It would enter the amplifier in this direction right here. Where we find a type 930 photo tube. A high voltage was applied to this tube and depending on the amount of light striking this curved surface would determine how much current would flow through. So we have the modulated light which would then modulate the current through this tube which was amplified by this tube, amplified by a 6SL7, and then we have a pair of 25L6 tubes. These appear to be the original Bell and Howell tubes. And there we can see the type. It's a 25L6 GT, where GT stands for glass tube. Check out this attention to detail. They actually printed the tube number on the socket, so 25L6 GT. As we conclude, let's take this plate off and see what's inside and see if it's been modified over the years. This amplifier is absolutely gorgeous. The original twist lock capacitors are installed as those carbon composition resistors. I wonder, are these black beauty capacitors? The other capacitors appear to be original. The solder jobs are all nice and clean. And check this out. There's a pair of selenium rectifiers. This came from that short period of time between the vacuum tube rectifier. For example, you might have used a Type 80 here previously, or a 5U4, and that time when silicon diodes took over. We should note that this is a challenging technology by the very fact that there are these huge heat sinks attached to the selenium rectifiers. And in this particular case, there's a cage in which the heat can be dissipated.